Hello there, everybody. I'm Captain Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach. I'm the founder of the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program, creator of No Hassle Newsletters, my done-for-you newsletter program used by over 1,200 small business owners. And for the last 10 years, probably what I have the most fun with, I'm the host of Dream Business Radio, the weekly podcast created to help you build your dream business. This is episode 575. <laughs> and I am super excited, obviously, just bubbling out of my chair here because my special guest is none other than Lindsay Anderson. Lindsay, how you doing today? Jim, I'm so excited to be here today. I'm uh, I'm doing great. I I looked it up. You were my guest. You've been my guest many times over the years. The last time was two years ago, March 2021. We were broadcasting from our floating home in North Carolina for that interview. And um, I brought you on as an expert. I think that was uh, paid ads or something like that, but it's your, your depth of knowledge astounds me. But anyway, I'm, I'm excited to jump in because this is really a hot topic. I think this is going to be a lot of comments. Anyway, hey, folks, this episode of Dream Business Radio is brought to you by none other than the incredible Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program. If you're an entrepreneur who wants to grow a more profitable business faster by creating an in-demand brand, great marketing, especially if you want to learn how to create multiple streams of revenue, you want to be part of this extraordinary virtual mastermind led by me, Captain Jim. You can learn more at dreambizcoaching.com, dreambizcoaching.com. By the way, you want to get a copy of my multiple streams of revenue book. This is a free ebook that I put out actually a couple a couple months ago, and it's by far the most, it's actually tied with how to charge what you're worth and work three days a week. These two books are neck and neck, but I'm promoting this one today. Anyway, it is totally free and it tells you exactly, I literally described, I think it was about 12 pages, how I went from growing one successful business to six. If this strategy is important to you, or if you'd like to learn how to do that, then go to create multiple streams of revenue.com create multiple streams of revenue.com. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a little fun here. Um, oh, by the way, at the end of the show, I'm going to tell you how you can get free copies of my six dream business building books, but we're going to talk about chat GPT. What's that you say <laughs> if you've been under a rock? So I'm going to properly introduce my guest. Lindsay Anderson is an accomplished master business coach. She has over 20 years of experience as a digital marketing business owner. Ah, I should have got that picture of you renting your first space. I boned on that one. Anyway, <laughs> Lindsay's unique expertise lies in her ability to help coaches use a wide variety of strategies to attract high quality leads. She does this through effective lead generation and conversion strategies. Now, harnessing with the help, harnessing with the help, harnessing chat GPT to make this even more precise and faster. Lindsay is an alumni of the Dream Business Mastermind. She's spoken at my Dream Business Academy event. She's an award winner. And um, I'm going to actually, um, let me show you a couple of things here. So, th Lindsay, if you can, I don't know if you can see, I assume you can I see can. that. That was Dr um, Dream Business Academy, San Diego, 2018. I'm 99% sure. This is you winning an award, which I think is right behind you. <laughs> the yes, the it is. Dream yes. Business Award. Okay, so let's turn. I got one more picture, but not yet. Anyway, Lindsay, you and I first met <laughs> when I interviewed you on my podcast like years and years ago. And literally, I think it was about three or four weeks later, you, you told your husband, Ian, well, you told him that day, honey, you're going to have to watch the kids because three or four weeks later, you came to one of my events. I remember you sitting in the front row, feverishly writing notes, and then you joined my um, VIP coaching program. And it's it's been an incredible ride. So um so, Lindsay, one of the first things I do, I know you've seen this show, but um, I like to get a little backstory. I think a lot of people that are probably tuning in from your side and my side of the fence, so to speak, kind of know about your uh, entrepreneurial background. But I actually found a picture which goes way back. This may actually be your first job. I don't know. Is, is that your? <laughs> You're a lifeguard. I mean, that's so incredible. <laughs> oh, yep, God. That's Having my first Job. I, that's right. Yeah, look at that. Having some fun here, folks. Okay, now we're, we're going to get down to serious business. Wow, we got some comments piling up. Hey, I'll, everybody. So nice to see you guys over there. I'll cycle through once I get you a, a chance to talk here. What? Anyway, one of the things I admire about you is that you're just a, you're a voracious consumer of information and all things new. Um, I mean, that was me a long time ago, but um, I, I, I'm kind of waning a little bit. But not only that, see, I, information for the sake of information is one thing, but implementing it, taking action on it and growing your own business and then helping other people grow their business. 
that really, I mean, that goes up multiple notches in my belt. I, if there's anybody that does that well, I think that's you. Um, I, I do consider you an expert on all things online marketing, but today we're going to talk about chat GPT. So Lindsay, let's start with the basics. What is chat GPT and kind of how does it work? Hey, yeah. So love to be here. And in the comments, I would love to know how often you guys are using chat GPT. Are you using it once a day, once a week, never, ever. I would just like to know what you guys are doing right here, but what is ChatGPT? It's a piece of software. You go to chat, you look up Google ChatGPT, you're met with a prompt. And all this is, is it's a really good piece of software at figuring out uh, that that uh, says words in human language. And so it takes all of this information online and all of this, and you can go to ChatGPT and you can say, hey, ChatGPT, you know, you know, make me a marketing plan and ChatGPT will know what the next most popular word is. And it does it so quickly that mm. it generates human sounding like information. So as somebody who does content marketing, which I know Jim is a huge fan of, uh, mm -hmm. it's a real it's a real asset to you to start using it because uh, of this human language kind of situation that we have going. So it's just really just a piece of software. It's crazy. So it's, it's, I'm one of the most transparent entrepreneurs you'll ever meet, full disclosure, warts and all. But today, you know, I, I always set aside a half an hour in the morning when I'm going to do a live show like this and prepare. Yes, I do prepare. And Lindsay, so one of the things I did, I went to chat GPT and I said, what questions should I ask a chat GPT expert if I'm going to interview them? Oh boy. And, I, okay. and I'm going to ask you some of these questions. I was like stunned how quickly they came back. So was this like one of your first interactions with ChatGPT there, Jim? No, I've been I've been using okay. it for oh, I've been using it for at least three weeks. No, probably okay. you know, six <laughs> months or a year. At first it's like coming on. I'm like, it's there's on I'll be honest with you, something about it turned me off initially. Like, well, that's not very genuine. That's not real. That's not should I be promoting, should I be publishing like blog posts that are completely written by a computer? To me, that I don't know, could be my generation. It just didn't seem like authentic. But so I don't do that, but I do do it. Sometimes you need a little prompting. Like, what would this be? And I'll say, oh, that's great. And then I'll write it. So I'm not like just having it write stuff for me and putting it up. I'm a very good writer myself, but I do use Can it I for speak idea to that? generation. Can I speak yes. To that? Yes. Okay. So I agree with you. You do not want to take the outputs of ChatGPT and put that out online. First of all, everyone's going to know, okay? Like it's obvious that a bot is writing that, especially okay. if you don't know how to use ChatGPT. So I like to go in with the 20-60-20 rule, okay? 20% is the prompts that you actually give ChatGPT. ChatGPT is all about context. So to give you an example, the prompts that I put into ChatGPT are like 50 lines long. It's telling wow. it, hey, yes. And I store it in a document and I copy and paste those prompts to get really good context out of it. So 20% are the prompts that you're putting in and, and giving it really good context. Then ChatGPT will produce 60% of the work. It can do like 60% of the heavy lifting for you. And then the other 20%, you got to read it. You got to make sure it's true. You got to make sure that your voice and your extra sizzle is on there and that it sounds like you. And so you want to approach ChatGPT, like I call it, Jim, the VA that you never have to pay. Okay. Oh, so yes. You're talking to it like a team member and really expecting that kind of output from it, not that it's going to do everything for you. And when you go in with those expectations, then you can really use this as an asset in your business, as you're marketing and developing your content and those kind of things. You know, you just, the way you describe it, you're going to recognize this phrase because I used to teach it. I'll call it the mule and magician, right? The, you can get the mule to do 90, 80% of the work, and then you put your touch on it and make it your own, make it special, make it spark, make it in your voice. That sounds a lot like chat GPT almost. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And so a lot of people just, you don't want to roll up to chat GPT and be like, write me an Instagram post about 10, 10 health and wellness tips. Yeah, you're going to get crap out of that. What mm. you want to do is roll up to chat GPT and say, hey, chat GPT, Act as if you are a professional marketer only using the best marketing strategies out there. 
I am a digital marketing expert helping coaches really scale their online businesses through systems and strategies and sales. My perfect client is, and then I describe my perfect client, and then I say, write me a blog post about their top two pain points. And so when you give it that much information, okay, it starts sounding a lot more like you and a lot less like a bot. So Lindsay, what, so you just said um, you want to... To help it get to know your voice and your customer's avatar, is that a separate thing? Do you load something up and do you have your own profile or are you putting all that in one window? Yeah, so the way that I view ChatGPT and all of the scripts is it's an asset in your business. So mm -hmm. number one tip on ChatGPT is you go into it with a really organized approach, okay? And so I have a document, I have a Word document library of, of prompts. And so... One prompt is this describes my perfect customer. One prompt is this describes me. And then also within ChatGPT, just like it's a team member, you're able to do threads, okay? So in one thread, I'm talking to it about how can I get on more podcasts? So it knows the context. That's my podcast, ChatGPT. One is write this Instagram post kind of thread. And so you want to continue the conversation in these thread, but threads, but you want to stay very, very focused. That's the key about ChatGPT is focused and organizing these prompts. So you're not just sitting down like typing, okay? No, you're copying and pasting. It's like a variable thing. So, so just so I'm clear, the context that we're looking for, do you have to um, prompt that each time? In other words, you don't, you, there's no profile that you sign into, right? Or does it store no, there things is, like that? It saves all of your chat. So on my chat, GPT, ah. I have one thread for podcasts. I have one thread for my marketing. I have a thread for all of my customers. And so now when, when I get a new customer on the phone and we're brainstorming content, I can click on that and it remembers my whole history about that customer. And so we continue the conversation. Very cool. So what are some of the, I mean, it sounds mind-blowingly powerful. What are some of the limitations that you, you might have found so far in helping it generate content that has a human-like quality? Because yeah. it's clearly not. So, so I, I boil that down to, to, to three things. There's three pillars to success for using ChatGPT in marketing. I'm reading this comment too. But number one, Okay, as I mentioned in the 20-60-20 rule is you have to maintain human touch. So ChatGPT, again, all it is, is a computer program uh, calculating what the next most popular word is. So there are stories of it actually lying to people and not really knowing, it's not fact checking anything. So there was like this attorney, there was a story about this attorney who goes to ChatGPT, give me some legal cases for this case. Uh. And he just straight up uses them. And, and he even asked ChatGPT, are these real? And ChatGPT says, yes, okay? This is not a person, this is a computer program. And so the judge, like this dude's in a ton of trouble because you cannot trust it. Wow. So the three, yeah, so, you, so it lies to you, okay? That's, that's one thing. So the second thing is you're gonna sound like a freaking bot, but I think that is something that everyone here needs to know is that, I call it the bot apocalypse and information now is totally free. It's easy to get information. And so now all of your competitors and all the newbie competitors, they're going to sound like experts just like you because they're using chat GPT. So you want to be aware of it. You want to start using it. You can't ignore it because it's here to stay. Okay. And it's really important that you understand that, your competitors are using it and everyone looks like an expert online. So how do we combat, combat that? Okay. The three success pillars. Number one, maintain human touch. I already mentioned this 20, 60, 20. You got to have your hands on this thing. Okay. Number two, your expertise and value. How do you stand apart from the dude who just got online and decided to be a coach and you with, you know, 30 years of experience and hundreds of success stories under your belt? As I said, those prompts, you're putting in your expertise, you're putting in your value, you tell chat GPT all of that and your voice and all of this kind of thing, and it can give you really good prompts back. And then the third thing is a proven strategy. If you think chat GPT is gonna solve your marketing and sales problems, it won't. If you had them before, 
you'll still have them. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, that's always been my, um, my pet peeve, so to speak, is when in the online world, when, oh, I can teach you out of a six or seven figure business, but you're, last year you made $42,000 yourself on a good yes. year, <laughs> you know, or life coaches who are, you know, 18 years old, no offense to 18 year olds, but, you know, the people who can, seems to me this chat GPT, well, like anything, there's going to be positives or negatives. This is going to make it so much easier for those people to sound brilliant, but it's also going to make it harder for the truly brilliant ones to stand out. Do, do, do you agree? I, I, told, I think that's the problem. That's the bot apocalypse right now. And so the real way to market, which is the William <clears throat> Palmer always taught everybody to market, okay? It's your authenticity. You show up as a human being. You, you put your human touch in there. You can't be so polished all the time because ChatGPT is polished. Like, don't be afraid of sharing some vulnerabilities and, and your authentic self. And that's how you are not going to be wrapped in as a bot out there. Well, and the other thing, which is kind of obvious, but a chat GPT can't do this. It can't come on right. and do a live interview, right? So, right. I mean, like I said, it can help you maybe prepare for an interview, but you've got to go live and show your own personality and, and that of your guests. You have to go live. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, wow, this is fascinating. So what are some of the key marketing challenges that you help your clients with? Typical small business owners, I know you really focus on the coaching niche, which I love. How can ChatGPT address some of those challenges? Yeah, so the number one challenge right now is lead gen. And I think that I think that that's always been, you know, if as a business owner, you don't have high quality leads coming in, then what are you going to do? Because you will die because cash and revenue on the other side, sales on the other side is really the gas fueling your business. And mm -hmm. so my specialty is helping people generate <clears throat> these high quality lead sources online. And there's really, can I go over the five ways to do that? Love Tim, it. I'll boil yep. it down for everybody. Okay. okay. We don't have like, I'll boil this down guys. You have the first thing, you have is um, is uh, search engine optimization. Okay, that's getting seen on Google. That is an option, but it takes about twelve months to actually start ranking, and then you have to have a team because you guys are not SEO experts. And then there's a whole other problem of okay, well they came to my website. How do I actually convert them into a client? So mm. SEO not that great of an option for most small business owners. Okay, it's something you should be working on in the background, but it is not where you're going to get a ton of clients right now. Okay. The next thing that you have are paid ads. Now in the comments, give me some dollar signs on how much money you've invested yourself into paid ads. Now paid ads are tough because uh, they're getting more and more complicated. You used to be able to run these things by yourself, but really if you're spending more than say $500 on paid ads, you need a team. You need to be able to track that ROI. You don't want to be throwing money at the Facebook ads fire and just hoping and praying it's going to result in clients because spoiler alert, it won't. Okay. Right. Without a plan or a strategy. So that can be very, very expensive. The third option is going to be launching. So I love myself a good launch. This is where you make a big fanfare. You, you, you're, you're teaching over the course of three days. Maybe you're giving a webinar and you're really trying to sell from that. Now, I love a good launch, but a launch is only as good as your audience. And, and they can be really, really exhausting. You can only do those a few times a year. And so launching. The can, I, way, can I pause you before yeah, you go to four I and five? To pause me, Jim. So, so launching, I mean... Gosh, you were doing that a lot. My daughter Jessica does that a lot. I used to do it, but it did it. Did that fire seem to burn out a little bit? Did people burn out on launches? Or they're very hard and time consuming for sure. Yeah, this is how you want to view launches. Lots of people right now in 2023 going into 2024. Okay. Launches used to work really well as like a, a one time flashpoint. Mm -hmm. And you would bring people in and you could sell hundred thousand dollars worth of coaching in one launch, but now you need to view it more as a holistic approach where you're actually putting four to six launches on your calendar a year. You're not pinning all your hopes and dreams on one launch because is what's happening is that people need to attend multiple launches. They need to see you in live in person a couple of times before they're willing to invest because there's so many coaches and so many launches happening. And so 
when you view it from a holistic approach and you plan out your whole year to answer your question, Jim, yeah, launches work really well, but when they're kind of stacked on top of each other. Okay. Well, last question on launches, because you you helped me with my first few, and I think they were five days. Then I think we did three days. Has that changed or shortened? Or because didn't, didn't didn't people used to do like five day challenges? Or yeah, like, I'm oh just, my God. I actually just finished a five day launch yesterday. Did you? So okay. Yeah, I mean the fact is, and again, this speaks to ChatGPT and all of that we've been talking about. The more people can experience you live, the more that no like and trust factor is through the roof, and so. Yeah, three days, but does that close as many people as five days? No, it just doesn't. And so I like to do a rinse and repeat launch because I know they can be very um, emotionally draining. Mm -hmm. But if you plan it out a year and ahead, and maybe you're doing two different topics a few times a year, and it's the same stuff you did last year, and you know that it works, and it's in a system, it's actually not so bad. You're actually just showing up live, and for most people, doing what you love to do, which is teach. Great. Thank you. Okay. What's number four, Lindsay? Four is relationships. Now relationships, you guys have got to double down on that. Relationships are amazing. Okay. However, you can't really like rely on relationships to always be bringing you clients. Yes. I love affiliate marketing, but like, can you count on it every single time you want to be in control of your marketing and your lead source? Because if you are not, and it dries up, then your business dries up. So while I love relationships, they're really hard to count on all the time. So always be working on relationships. But that leaves us number five. Do you want to guess what it is, Jim? Is it the biggie? Uh, I, the, I, you no, know, you go ahead because I'm I'm paying attention to what I'm going to ask you next. Fair enough. Semi listening to you. <laughs> social media. Okay. Okay. It's free. Okay. It's organic social media. It's free. Uh, you can connect with people. You can connect with your past clients, your prospects, your colleagues, most people. Okay. That are not getting leads from social media are not posting consistently. They're posting in fits and spurts mm -hmm. and they are doing what I call a content drop and run. They will have a VA or a marketing agency, create some content, they'll drop it on social and they'll take off. That is not how you want to approach social media if you really want to use it as an appropriate lead gen. But my favorite is social media. It's where I get 70% of my clients. And one thing you do well, which I try and do, is you're always interacting. In fact, one of your posts today was, some, I think it was like, what are you excited about today? And you said, sharing a gift. Of course, I'm like, oh, I get to interview you, right? So, but that's the the interaction is very helpful as well, correct? Yeah, so it's the more engagement, the better. So the post was, how was your day? GIF answers only. Now, does that promote me as a business owner? No, not necessarily. However, does it tell the algorithm? And does it get people commenting and getting that algorithm and feeding that algorithm and letting me know who's watching and interacting in like not such a business kind of way? Yeah. So that when I do go post a business post, it's all on my side, including the relationships. That's right. I used to, t I used to tell people, you know, I could post some brilliant piece of marketing advice and get maybe eight or 10 likes. I post a picture of my dog blue and it might get 52, you know, but that's, that's the balance, right? That's, that's part of your authentic personality. Anyway, I don't want to, I want to keep going on chat GPT. Are there ways that um, chat GPT can help with market research or even like competitive analysis, or is it not the thinker? I think you said earlier. It definitely can. So like, um, you know, really when it comes to like, if you're so for social media, I want to get back to social media marketing and how it can really help you. Can I, can I make a point just on when you post Absolutely. about your dog though, real quick. Okay. Yeah. When, uh, cause we all create these, we all put a lot of heart and soul into our posts on social media. And most people are like, Oh my gosh, this is the post that I think everyone's going to like, because like it came from my soul. And like, if they could only feel what I'm putting into this post and then it gets like 10. Okay. You can't view social media as this is the one that's going viral. This is the one that's going to finally bring me all the customers. When you're posting on social it, you want to view it as like, okay, this is one piece of marketing in a hundred that are going to bring me clients. And this is just one little beat in that marketing. And when you approach it with more of that attitude, then you have a, then you don't give up on social media because you poured your whole heart into something that only got 10 likes. Okay. Mm. It's, it's a process. It's like, 
a whole bunch all together marketing. Now, how can ChatGPT help us find our customers? So one thing, so there's four things that you need to be posting on social media as a business owner, okay? You are not an influencer, okay? Spoiler alert, you're not Kim Kardashian, okay? You don't wanna be posting like a lot of like, here's what I had for lunch and all that. She gets mm. paid because of eyeballs. As business owners, there's four things that you wanna be posting and, and ChatGPT can help us with all these. So those are your VEMS, V-E-M-S. Vibe, people, for me, I'm a highly caffeinated individual that tells you <laughs> like it is. Okay. I tell you like it is. It's hard to build a business. It takes consistency. There's no flash in the pan. That's just my personality. Now you have to put that out on social to attract people to you. Okay. The second is experience. Uh, people want to work with somebody who has a proven track record. So you want to be showing up on social media, sharing client stories, sharing these kind of things. The next is your methodology. Okay. If you don't have people want someone with a plan, if you don't have a plan and you're not constantly out on social telling people about your plan, then people won't want to work with you. And then finally is your skills. What kind of skills do you have? Put that on social. And so when we go to, and you really want to be speaking to people's problems. Now, when you're creating content, it can be really hard to start with the beginner's mind. Okay. For me, I've been digital marketing for 20 years. I don't remember what it's like to not know what a landing page is. Okay. Mm. And so you can go to ChatGPT. And again, guys, it's all about the context here. Hey, ChatGPT, I am an expert in who has experience with. Here is, and when you put in the information about your client, okay, don't try to do it broadly. Like I generally serve these kind of people. If you want great information from ChatGPT, take your one true client, that one true client in your experience that paid you what you wanted to be paid, that that had the transformation that you were promising, like this perfect client, and tell ChatGPT about that client, okay? This is what they came to me for. This is what I helped them with, very specific to one person. And then say, give me five blog posts or five social media posts or topics that I can speak to around this person. And when you give ChatGPT that much context, it knows who that person is. It can really help you start with that beginner's mind what are their bi three biggest problems? What should I be talking about? Talk to this thing, okay? That's another tip for ChatGPT, which is iterative. If ChatGPT comes back with, say, five blog posts that you totally hate, okay, instead of closing the computer and throwing it out your window, like you wouldn't fire your VA for coming back with five lame topics, you would say, you know what? Actually, I kind of was thinking to kind of hit it from this angle instead. You kind of were hitting it from this angle, I want to hit it from this angle. Talk to ChatGPT like that. No, actually, instead, take it from here and see, talk to it, see what it uh, produces, and you'll find much better results. That's crazy. Lindsay, um, can you go like five minutes? I mean, we're already at the bottom of the hour. Oh, yeah. I thought we were, yeah, I thought we were going an hour. So are we only at 30 minutes? That's why we're both talking so fast. <laughs> <laughs> we are a couple of fast talkers, but I'm loving that I'm learning as much, which tells me the little voice people say, keep going, Jim. Okay. How could chat GPT um, potentially help identify a target audience? Like most people know who their target audience is. So I guess I'm asking, how can chat B GPT Help, help find those, not okay. to find your target audience, but find those people. Well, I mean, you should ask it. So, I mean, everyone should have a business coach. Okay. Everybody who's building a business needs a business coach, but you should ask chat GPT. Hey, chat GPT. I talk to it like a business coach. I'm trying to find these people. Give me five ideas on where to find them. Um, tell, you know, chat GPT, tell me, you know, like talk to it like that. It can give you really great advice and information if you just talk to it it knows so much i can't even express to you so one of the things that you do well with with your clients for years is use an expression um high quality clients which is great because who, who wants to bring people in with with no money no offense if you have no money but maybe that maybe you're not a fit for, for my you business need money. <laughs> you need money right how can chat gpt um in the marketing and and in sales of what whatever we do, how can it help identify like high quality clients, not just a plethora of clients? 
Yeah, I mean, I think high quality clients for you and for people out there. So first of all, you guys have got to know you can't market to somebody who is not in your experience. Okay. You can't try to make it up based on what you think. And another big problem people have is they try to market to themselves. Well, I had this problem and I know how I feel. You can't market to yourself. You are way too close to that problem. And so I don't know that ChatGPT can solve that problem for you, Jim. That comes with experience of mm. who paid you what you wanted to be paid. What transformation did you create for them or what service are you really, really good at? You have to have that in your experience first before you can ever market to that. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm a big fan, which, you know, Dan Kennedy probably said it best is if your marketing is not repelling, you know, half the people and attracting the other half, then your marketing is is all over the place. You're trying to do business with everybody. Clearly, yes. there's, you know, as you said, your your vibe, your high energy, high octane, you know, type of person, as am I. <laughs> but and, and that doesn't resonate with some people. That's OK. I'm not meant to do business with everybody. Right. What is it you used to say about being halfway up the flagpole there, Jim? Well, there's an expression that says um, the, the higher up the flagpole you go, meaning as you get more successful, the more your butt's going to hang out, right? And, which means people take shots at you, right? Because the, all the other people, the average are down here. So as you start climbing, they start taking shots at you. Dan said something like that. I edited it. Far be it for me to edit Dan Kennedy. But I said, well, that's OK, because the view is so much better up there. <laughs> so take all the shots you want. I, You know, everybody... I definitely had some imposter syndrome and a bunch of stuff. We all did when we were coming up, so to speak. One of the things I learned, though, is that the people that would take the shots at you, they're the only ones. They're Nobody that's doing what you're doing or more takes shots at you. It's always the people who are not doing anything. So jealous or, or whatever. But it's those people. And why would you take their advice? So anyway. Um, yeah, so Tommy, nice to see you. I was just telling Jim I'm going to talk to you in a while. So yeah, oh, Mr. <laughs> Homie, what's up, dude? And dude, ass, come on, Adam, get, get it right. So anyway, hey, Lindsay. Um, so social media, uh, we talked about um, doing the challenges or launches and things like that. What's another way that you can take somebody from from a social media follower kind of into at least the funnel to become a paying client? Yeah. So I'm really big on live events. So the thing that I've implemented in my business that's been one of the best marketing assets I've ever implemented is the introduction of what I call an invite only event. Mm. Okay. This is a 54, yeah, 54 minute webinar masterclass that I give rinse and repeat every single Thursday. Okay. And this thing sets me up as an expert. It basically, it basically talks to my ideal client. It warms them up with some mindset. It brings up three of their problems, gives them one aha moment for each problem, and then invites the right people to an enrollment call. I'm not creating this thing from scratch. It's rinse and repeat. I know it's on my calendar. Every time I give it, I give it even better. And so the best way, again, is when a follower comes. So when we talk about social media, okay, when a follower comes in, I'm not inviting every single follower. I'm treating them like people, okay? I go and look at their profile. Who are you? Who is this person that just followed me? I am a person. You're a person. And if they seem like a good fit for me, I will invite them to this invite-only event. And typically, I'm only shooting for about 20 people to be there. But when I extend an offer in the DMs like this as a human mm -hmm. to a human, for a launch, you're typically going to get a 10% show up rate. But when you do invite only, hey, I know you, okay? I looked at you. I looked at some of your stories and you invite them to this webinar, which again is rinse and repeat on my calendar. Then um, the, the show up rate is over 60% because you're making that human connection. And so it's in a system, but there's also some human interaction there and that. And so that is how I get people off of social and into my coaching programs without really uh, spending so, so much time trying to do it. That's awesome. So I have two more questions for you, Lindsay. And this one's been rattling in my head. I'm trying to think of a, of, of a good way to answer it or ask it, actually, have you answer it. So um, you've, I've seen people, because in doing my research, all, all kinds of experts and things like that are saying, oh, it can like build out funnels. It can do this, set and the other thing. To me, it's like, I, again, I, I think it can help with the idea generation, maybe help with the heavy lifting, the mule part. But 
chat GPT can't really create any whole stream of things and actually bring people in that get out their credit cards, right? It's a tool, but it's it, 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 it does have its limitations. It percent of the work. You have to have human touch. You have to have your expertise and value and a decent strategy. It will not fill in the blanks on that. And, and therefore, the few people I saw teaching that run because it's- <laughs> You're going to sound like a bot, you guys. It will not work. It's oversaturated. You got to use it as a VA or a team member, not as the total solution. That's my takeaway. So somebody can put that in the comments, but it's, it's, it's like a VA that you don't have to pay. I think Lindsay said Hey, that don't kill my line. No, I will. I'll, no, I'll give you credit. I just want to remember it because my <laughs> mind's going a million miles. Okay. My final questions. What, and I do believe with all things like this, there's good benefits and there's things you should look out for. What, what do you think are some of the pitfalls or things that small business owners should watch out for when starting to use chat GPT in our marketing and, and sales? Yeah, don't over rely on it. If you people can tell that you use chat GPT, period. So you have to put your own human touch on it. Let me give you a hint, okay? So for example, uh, chat GPT is really good at, at helping. For example, I sit down and I write my own emails to my list once a week. Okay. And I will sit down and this is how it saves me time on that. I don't have it write the email. Instead, I sit down and I type out the email and it's way more imperfect than it used to be. Okay. But then I go to chat GPT and I say something like this, everybody listen up. Okay. I say chat GPT, I'm going to input an email that I've created for my list keep as many of my same words as possible, only editing for grammar, punctuation, and clarity, and uh, and then write a list at the end of everything you changed. That's one of my favorite prompts to take an email that I basically puked out on paper that may not be like form formatted that great to get ChatGPT to do some work. So the, the pitfalls are number one, you're relying on it too much and your personal voice and your authenticity is taken out of it. That won't work. Mm. Okay. Number two, ignoring it and saying, I'll never use chat GPT spoiler alert. Your competitors are. So it's just like when social media came on the scene, you have to start using it. Number three, it's a skill just like, all the other tech stuff you guys have to learn in order to build this business, okay? You can't get frustrated at the beginning. You have to practice and use it and get comfortable with it because it is a skill. And then fourth, it will totally, totally lie to you, okay? So the kids and I were doing a quiz off of it. Hey, give me 10 trivia questions. And it said a cheetah was an invertebrate. Like this thing is not smart, okay? So you have to know it will lie to you. It is just a computer program. So those are my big four takeaways there, Jim. Your personal voice is so important. I told you I asked my last question. So this is actually it. I, I tricked you. Um, so I know we're doing an interview, so we're actually conversing. But when you when you say, this is what I type in, I go, hey, chat GPT, blah, 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 blah. Do you actually type that in like a conversation or do you just... I mean, yeah, you know what I mean, I, mean, I kind of do. Here's the thing is like ChatGPT will remember everything. So like be nice to it. OK, because like, who knows? OK. And so, I mean, yeah, I kind of do. I, uh, it's my VA that I don't have to pay. <laughs> That's awesome. You are a rock star. I knew this was going to be freaking amazing. Um, how can people connect with you? I'm sure they're going to watch. By the way, um, folks, somebody said they're going to watch this again. It, it yeah. lives. It'll be it's we're broadcasting now on my profile page. I think Lindsay's sharing it. It's on my Build Your Dream Definitely. Business Now Facebook group, which if you're not a member, you should be. It's also on uh, my LinkedIn page. You might be watching it there. But tomorrow I upload this recording to my Dream Business YouTube channel. So that's probably the easiest one to go to instead of trying to find it. Lindsay, you're so awesome. How can people connect with you and continue to learn from you? So I actually, if you like this ChatGPT and authentic marketing with ChatGPT, I do give a masterclass about every week on this. So go to my Instagram at the.lindsay.anderson, okay? And DM me the word ChatGPT and I'll get you, uh, I'll invite you to that masterclass. It's live with me. I'll show you these prompts. We'll go through it even more. So that's probably going to be the biggest takeaway is find me on Instagram at the.lindsay.anderson. I'm also on TikTok there too. Okay. And um, is your main website still lindsayA.com? lindsayA.com. There's a bunch of freebies there, guys, on how to really authentically grow your business with social media, coach and scale out your coaching businesses and those kind of things. So visit me over there for lots of freebies. 
You're awesome. Hey, let's not make it two years before we do this again. I know, Jim. It's been so good reconnecting. I know. Thank you so much. Hey, folks, that wraps up this very special interview with my guest, Lindsay Anderson. You can connect with her at lindsayacom plus the, uh, everything else she mentioned. But I got to make sure I put that in there so it goes in the YouTube link. Anyway, and you can connect with me at getjimpalmer.com. That's my home base. Again, if you're interested in joining me and about 24 other very smart entrepreneurs in the Dream Business Mastermind, go to dreambizcoaching.com. And by the way, I mentioned um, my, you can get all six of my biz, dream business. Come on, Jim, you can do this. Dream business books. They're free in digital format, part of my legacy building program. So uh, there are Nook books at barnesandnoble.com. They're in the iBook store. You can download them there. And you can also download them as Kindle books at Amazon. You'll see there's zero, no opt-in, no nothing. It's just an education on me. And don't forget to get a free copy of my multiple streams of revenue book. This is, it's a book. It's an ebook. So it's like, it's like 12 pages. Tells you exactly how I went from creating one successful business in 2001 to six, and then being able to be the dream business coach and work three days a week for the last seven years. You definitely want to read this book, but that's it until this time next week. I am Captain Jim Palmer, the dream business coach. You take good care. Thanks, Lindsay.